on November 5th, 2022, we had our first mock powerlifting meet, if you want to call it that, I guess. Uh, none of us are looking to be competitors or anything like that. We just did this for fun. So, you know, we were using equipment that you wouldn't normally use in powerlifting meet and stuff, but we don't really care. We're not trying to be professionals here. We're just doing something for fun. So this event uh, was based on uh, teamwork. So what we did was 3v3. And at the end of the meet, we took the Wilk score from all the lifts that we did that day and our body weight, and then added those Wilk scores together, and whichever one had the highest, uh, that team won. So for this meet, we allowed straps, knee sleeves, elbow sleeves, belts. Um, we didn't allow knee wraps and, you know, like suits and, you know, stuff like that for, you know, like uh, bench shirts and all the crazy, like, uh, equipped lifting stuff. Just stuff that would make the lifts easier for us to do and not have to worry about like grip and other you know stupid stuff like that um so you can see here i, I pulled up like the dock that we had for the day um 90 a.m everyone arrived we went eight at ihop and then around 11 we wanted to actually get it started you know we're like warming up and all that fun stuff get the food digested a little bit um you can see all the stuff we had to like bring you know people needed to bring and then we had the rules down here at the bottom and just like I said, with like, uh, you know, the belt and sleeves and all that fun stuff, uh, wrist wraps, whatever. So we did it just like a normal meet where you did squat, bench, and deadlift in that order. Uh, we made like a, a rule where each, for each team, whoever was uh, doing the lift, someone from their group had to be the person lifting off for them. So there's no like, you know, debate on, oh, you messed him up or, you know, whatever. Um, we had the rule where you do you know, three different attempts per lift. But if you missed a lift, like it was too heavy and you wanted to go down and wait, uh, we allowed that just because, like we said, not trying to be professionals and we want to actually, you know, get some weight and, you know, get some points on the board. So we allowed that. And then judging was just kind of group consensus and also like looking at the videos afterwards and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, let's get into some of these lifts and just talk about some of the competitors and what they did that day and things they were um, suffering from injury wise and other, other things like that coming into the event. And uh, yeah, um, the whole thing actually started um, because I challenged my brother-in-law name's Bobby, but he goes by Dobber or Dobbs. That's what we call him. So um, anyways, I challenged Dobbs and I was like, Hey, Let's do a fun event where uh, it's me and two of my coworkers versus two and you co your coworkers. And uh, I work in IT. Got I team IT versus Dobbs team, which is team EMS. They're all um, EMS, EMT, paramedic guys, you know, saving lives every day while we're just, you know, working on computers. So interesting dynamic of uh, individuals. But yeah, uh, he asked his buddies and they were down. And I had two guys, and uh, we went after it. So, to talk about their team. So, Dobbs is, I believe, 22. Um, it's my brother-in-law, like I said. Married my sister, Kylie. Um, he's like six foot three, four, and weighs 260. So, pretty big boy. Uh, used to be a wrestler in high school. And uh, now he's been getting into lifting more that I've been... Uh, kind of teaching him how, you know, how to do some stuff and just, he's been enjoying that more. So he's kind of been just doing that. Um, then we have his buddy Coda, who is one of the smallest people that I know. He is like five, four and weighs a buck 24. He's a very lightweight dude, but in terms of strength, he is ridiculous. He's very good for his weight. He, he surprised us <laughs> during this event. Um, and then we've got Austin, who is about Dobbs' height as well, so like 6'3", 6'4", something like that, weighs 189. And this dude is really strong, too, for, like, him and Coda, um, they kind of came into this thing, like, just just to do it for fun and, like, you know, the competition. But they weren't really, like, you know, training super hard and, like, you know, trying to be, like, super dedicated to, to like, oh, yeah, like, we, we got to, like push our limits and, you know, stuff like that. It's like, they were obviously working hard, but you know, they, they weren't working like all the time to try and, you know, get crazy results because first off their job doesn't really allow for it. Um, they work crazy hours and 
their access to gyms is very limited. So that plays a part of it. And then obviously, like, you know, life. They've got families, kids, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So a little bit different than, say, someone like uh, Dobbs, who, you know, doesn't have any kids. And, you know, he's able to work out a little more than they would. Um, and then, you know, someone like me, who, you know, don't ha- doesn't have anything but work and then just comes home and, you know, works out. So <laughs> it's, you know, a little bit, a little bit different dichotomy there. But now let me talk about my teammates. We've got... Uh, Jeremy, who is 44, I believe, and just is now getting into weightlifting, um, literally this year with, um, me and Christopher, who's been teaching him and, uh, he's been doing really well. He's like five, seven, six and weighs in at 184. But in terms of, um, you know, strength from like in the past, he used to do stuff like, you know, uh, working out in like the high school, college days and then doing stuff like P90X and more of like uh, hypertrophy type work. But since he knew about this competition and we had like wrangled him into it, you know, these past like three months, three, four months, something like that. And he's been doing a lot of all the, you know, barbell movements and learning how to actually do them. And it's been fun, been fun teaching them. Then we've got Christopher, who we call Wrench. That's his last name. Uh, and he is one strong dude. He's uh, he's probably like 5'8", 9", something like that. Probably, no, five, he's not like 5'9", 5'10", something like that. And uh, weighs 172. And this dude's pretty strong, man. Like In terms of uh, all of his lifts, they're all solid. So he knows what he's doing. He's uh, got a personal trainer license. He's... You know, he's been, he hasn't really gotten into um, powerlifting until we made this event happen. And so, like, he was more into, like, bodybuilding type stuff with also, like, you know, throwing in powerlifting strength work, like, here and there. But he would switch off a lot. And, you know, now that we were getting into this, he was like, all right, time to get serious and, like, actually start doing a lot of just the powerlifting compound movements. And that's what we've been doing. And then there's me, who I started like going to the actual gym gym um, and lifting barbells and weights in 2018, um, like October of 2018. And then didn't get really like serious with it and pro- probably till like, I don't know, like February of 2019. Um, but before that, it was a lot of just like P90X and insanity and running and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so I had a decent background in just like, you know, uh, movements like body movements and hypertrophy free stuff but didn't really know anything about barbells and so you know it's it's been like a good maybe like three years of me actually weightlifting now and powerlifting and then we also had a guest lifter and that is my buddy everett who lives in new jersey he's actually a weightlifter olympic weightlifting so clean and jerk snatch he's like my height so he's like six foot six one and weighs 176 on the day He's been a little heavier. He's been up to like 184, and that's where he hit most of his PRs in terms of um, all of his lifts uh, in the past, but he's down a little bit. So, you know, coming into this event, um, I can kind of tell you what each of these competitors were wanting to do. So for me, I was wanting to hit a bench PR. That was like the main thing I was coming into doing. Um, wanted to hit 320. Like I, my PR is 315. I've almost hit 325 once, and then I just wanted to, like, get something that was over 315, so that was kind of the goal, and then I was struggling from coming off an injury uh, from back in June, where I tore something in my glute, my left glute. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it was during a deadlift, like, PR day. I was doing, like, sumo. And I did some, like, stupid crap, and then I tried to, like, lift some other, like, lift, like, um, mixed grip, doing um, conventional afterwards and some other stuff. And, like, it just, I think I had my grip, like, too wide at one point, and it moved over, and I just, like, felt it. Like, as I came up, it, like, felt the, the, the muscle just, like, expand. And I was like, that's not good. And so then, like, I couldn't, like, move <laughs> very well after that, like, trying to put up all the weights. And then the week after that, it was, like, terrible. And really didn't heal up until it was it was probably like a month, like right before the competition. And then like I re aggravated it like with three weeks left. Like I, I I felt it 
do it again as I was doing a deadlift, but it didn't like full on do it. It was just like a a little bit. So it went from like being like 95, 98% healed to back down to like 85% healed. And I was like, crap. But then time by the time competition came around, it was back up to like 95, 98% healed to where it was like, it was still in there, but it was, it was good enough. And so uh, I was able to perform all the movement without like actually, you know, it hurting or anything like that. So that was good. And then we've got Wrench who he was doing fine until about three weeks out, two weeks out. And he hurt his left shoulder while we were doing a bench session and the, the weight came down and then there was just like, no, no up at all. He was like, Nope. And just like told me to grab it off of him and he hurt it somehow. He did something in there. And so that was cause for concern. But then he was able to do bench after that, like a week after. And we were like, okay, you know, that might be, we might be okay. And so we were kind of hesitant on what his shoulder was going to be like. Um, but in terms of what he wanted to hit, he wanted to actually PR on all three lifts. I'm I'm pretty sure, you know, looking at his numbers, he was definitely capable of doing that. So that, that was, you know, a, a crazy, you know, hard goal, but like a doable one. And, you know, with us going in, being our first powerlifting meet and not really knowing how worn out we were going to be from each of the lifts we were like you know it might happen it may not we'll find out so that's that was his story then we've got jeremy who is in the newbie gains phase still and so we had we had gotten a uh, pr on you know each of the the three lifts for him just to have numbers so that he could like train off of but then he you know he had no idea what he could actually hit in terms of like you know pushing his limits and we didn't like yeah, we had a lot of struggles with Jeremy, like getting him even to be able to do some of the lifts. Um, his ankle mobility was really bad, and his shoulders were even worse. His sh- and so it was like getting those two things worked out to where he could even do a squat with a barbell took like a good like three weeks to a month before he could even like he couldn't even squat down without any weight on him just and like not fall over. So it was it was kind of bad. His mobility was not there, and so. We had to really work on that and then, you know, progress through learning the lifts, then trying to put weight on them and then trying to like do a like semi PR to figure out, you know, what weight he could do and then, you know, work off that weight. And then, you know, him just, you know, excelling through all those weights. And then we're like, okay, we don't have much to put on. We don't want to PR yet because we're too close to the contest and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we, we set some arbitrary numbers that we were like, okay, well, based on what we've done and you've, hit these PRs like in training again, just like as normal lifts and stuff. We're going to, we're going to put it to this and you should be able to PR on basically everything as long as like nothing catastrophic happens. So that was, that was the goal for him. It was just like, you know, let, let's just kind of push your limits and like see where your ceiling's actually at. Then we've got Dobbs who is big one was he wanted to hit a 425 squat and that would be a new PR for him. His PR coming in is 405 and so he had been training and wanted to hit 425 that was his goal um he also wanted to get a new deadlift pr which he had been stuck at 455 for a year i believe he said and he was wanting to hit something over that on the day of and then bench just kind of you know like whatever just like maybe try to hit like uh the same that he had already you know just do something on bench he has been bench is the worst lift for him he doesn't like it not good at it so he was worried about the squat and deadlift more and then like i said with coda and austin earlier they they just came in just to have fun and so like they didn't even really have like numbers numbers to like go off they they had like an estimate kind of and so i kind of had to just uh, you know ask them like all right well what number do you want to think you try to hit? And then I'll give you some numbers for your like first attempt, second attempt, third attempt. And then we'll just go from there and see how you're feeling. So let's look at Everett coming into this. It was like two weeks left until the contest. And he was like, Oh, you know what? I think I'll join too. And he hadn't been uh, really doing any kind of gym work for a while. He'd been kind of just resting. Um, he had like knee surgery a while back and then, you know, he had gotten back into it, but then he's kind of in a lull period right now where he wasn't really doing it. He was just doing uh, more stuff like with work and all that. He only did like one bench session leading up to the event and then kind of put some numbers up like, uh, yeah, I'll try this that day. 
So yeah, say a little prayer here before we get started. All right, before we start, let's say a little prayer for us. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for my friends and family being able to spend a day with me today. We've done a lot of hard work. Let's be able to show what we have been working towards today. Let us not get hurt. Thank you for safe travels. And we do everything for your glory. Amen. 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 And we get it started, baby. First, I guess we'll look at some of what Coda did, um, since he's the, the lightest man. We had some trouble with Coda because him trying to get the bar on his back was a little bit of a struggle. It kept sliding down um, on some of them, like he would get it too low. But uh, yeah, so yeah, on the first lift, he wasn't able to get it. It was like right there. Um, he, he went for the, the same 225 on the second attempt. Oh, this is attempt two. Attempt two. Let's go. 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 let us go let us go Close enough, and you know, obviously, like we said, not trying to be pros here, so we're like, hey, you got it down and got it back up. Like, <laughs> we're gonna count it, man. Like, you know, close enough. So then he went for 240, and we had a lot of trouble with this one where it kept dropping off of his back, and we were getting scared. We were like, oh my god, he's gonna hurt himself. But you know, he kept wanting to try, and we're like, okay, man, like, you know, if that's you know, what you want to do, then we'll be here to try and spot you. So, I just threw it to match. He went down and got stuck like right there at the bottom. Couldn't get it, but it was it was right there. And so I think he was disappointed afterwards not being able to get that. But it was a good effort. And, you know, for him and um, Austin both just coming in uh, with not a whole lot of like, you know, prior weightlifting, powerlifting knowledge in terms of like, uh, you know, wh what to do specifically for technique and actually like studying and working on that kind of stuff. You know, that's they they do very, very well. All right, so let's look at Everett's lifts here. Like I said, he's a weightlifter. Um, he's not a powerlifter by any means. Doesn't ever do bench because he doesn't need it. Overhead press, sure, you know, that helps with uh, uh, jerks and snatches, but, like, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't need the bench. So, um, anyways, we start off with squat with him. And uh, squat is, like, his baby. That's the one, you know, he, he likes... Um, as far as I know, anyways, that's, that's, if I remember correctly. And so, you know, having coming off a knee surgery from, um, uh, earlier, was it that, was that this year? Is that earlier this year or it was, uh, last year, but either way, um, he's worked his way back up now. Like I said, he's under, he's not trained, under trained, I guess right now, like not, not in the groove cause he hadn't been doing things, but you know, he's got that, that weight lifter, uh, <laughs> style of a uh, high bar just perfect squatting you know so second tips 265 and you know he's down here in his his little dungeon with all of his uh you know, rusted weights and weight sets and everything it's it's a great environment it's good it's just like classic old school so here we go with the second lift nice nice and easy Beltless, no knee sleeves, no nothing. Just just raw strength. And we've got his third attempt for 275. After the competition was over, he, he talked to me and he was like, man, you know, probably should have went for more on the squat. <laughs> they they all seemed pretty easy to me, um, as you're about to see on this third one. But, you know, like he, like we said, he, he hadn't been in the, the training mode and didn't really know what to, what to expect. Mm. 
So next up, we'll look at Austin's lifts. So start with this squat here. He goes for 225 on his first one. Madman wearing sneakers while doing squats, too. Nice depth. Oh, pfft. Like it was nothing. Butter. Super easy. All right, bumps it up to 265. It's a pretty big jump. Um, squat was the one where we didn't really know um, what what to put for him. So we, we had numbers in, and, uh, you know, we were just like, all right, well, let's see what you can do. Gets that pretty easily. That that was convincingly easy. <laughs> that was nice. The third one, he goes for 300. Let's go! Do your night, let's go! So it started to pull him forward a little bit there. Like, I, that was at the threshold. Like, uh, if we go back and look at this real quick. So he gets nice depth that's like basically parallel, but then as he starts to come up, you can kind of see the bar like moving him forward. It starts to like get up on his neck and all that. And so. We just have to grab it and, like, you know, be safe. We don't want him to hurt himself there. But, man, it was very close. It was it was right on the edge there of him getting that. We're going to look at Jeremy's squat here. And I believe we had 265 as his actual max that we had given him during uh, all the training. So we decided, you know what, dude? Just go with 265 for the first attempt. And then just go up from there because it was so easy for him to do 265 that we're like, yeah, he'll be able to get that. And then we'll just see where it goes from there. So, nice depth. Comes up super fast. So, <clears throat> he still has to have the bar kind of high. You know, he can't really do low bar, low bar, like super down low just because of his shoulders. But <laughs> she doesn't really need it. <laughs> so, anyways, we're going for 285. 20 pounds more than he's ever done. This is new territory for everybody. Big breath, big breath. There we go. Get back up, 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 up. Shoof. Comes up super fast. Looking smooth with it. But then he went with 305. We decided not to do three plates just because that would be like a 30 pound jump. We were like, oh, let's just do another 20. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there. Don't want him to get hurt. We, you know, at this point, we're tired after two attempts. So, who knows? So. You know, so he's got more in the tank, baby. He sure does. So wrenches max in training, uh, like coming into training, was 335. In training, he hit a 345. So he wanted to see if he could uh, get at least 350 and get a new PR. Um, so first weight here is going to be three plates, 315. So here we go. Getting set up. Jeremy gets in front of the camera, which is always good. <laughs> but yeah, he, he gets that easily. Very quick. So it was looking good. So 335. His old max before starting all this training for this event. Though so back in like August. Oh yeah. Like perfectly parallel depth. Good. Felt good. So now we're going through for 350. New PR by five pounds. Yeah, he killed that. Like he could probably get Another, like, you know, 5, 10 pounds on there. Easy. That looked really good. So his squat session was real good that day. 
So now we'll get over to my lifts. So we've got squat here. And squat is the worst lift for me. Um, I've got a bad right hip that has like an impingement. And it's always just like not comfortable to squat. I can't, I, I still haven't figured out a, a, my the best way to do it. Like, I, you know, I, is it low bar? Is it high bar? Is it really wide foot, like sumo style? Is it, uh, you know, just like feet really turned out wide? Is it like, you know, whatever to just like help that hip a little bit? Um, luckily for this day, I was able to uh, get it to where it wasn't um, that bad on the impingement. I was able to like... Uh, do some stretches with bands and, and other things to like loosen it up. So it was, it felt okay, but the, um, uh, I, I, I just didn't, it didn't feel right on this first lift. I had, uh, set for 365. And we, as we see here, as I go down. And then as I start to come up, you see, like my arms moving a lot and stuff and that that to me was a bad indication i knew i knew it wasn't going to be a good day there was something something wrong um because your arms should stay like in line with your body the whole time and you see them like moving like up and down and all that and i was like okay yeah no um even like my pr is a 405 i had said in my mind that i was going to do 365 and then probably just 385 for the for this day um, didn't want to try to push that one cause that was the one that was, I wasn't really working towards anyways, um, in training and just wanted to kind of maintain after that one. I was like, nah, I'm, I'm only going to do 365 and not anymore. So I just stopped it there, which I think was smart. So now let's look at old Dobbs. So Dobbs, first squat attempt is 385. Like I said, his PR coming in is 405. So here goes the first one. It was a, a little bit high, but once again, you know, we're like, hey man, you know, it's close enough. And with Dobbs, um, he's he's new to doing, um, well, back squats in general, um, but especially low bar. So he was always using a safety squat bar before this, um, which is, if anyone's ever used that, you know it's way different it's very much more of a um hybrid between a high bar and a front squat so you know very very different from low bar and so his technique isn't the like it isn't perfected yet um when it comes to low bar but um he's been he's been learning it and so there's a few things we need to tweak and we've already talked about it and he knows he was kind of high during this event on all the attempts here but um but yeah anyways so here we go with 405 And that one was a little bit better on the depth there. And that was a, you know, he had a kind of a bad sticking point, but got through it down there in the hole. So that was impressive. And then he goes for the 425, which is what he was really wanting to hit here. Somewhat gets it. But we were like, uh, you know, we went back and after we looked at it, we were like, yeah, it was a little high, dude. And he, he, he was the first one to be like, hey, man, was I high? Like whenever we were looking at it and we were like, yeah, kind of were, dude. So we ended up not counting it. We were just like, let's not count it. Um, just so, you know, we, we make sure that when it comes to like a new PR that we're like, you know, being fair about it. So in terms of the other lifts, we went ahead and counted those. But for, for that one, we were like, nah, it's still a little bit too high. So he's already working on his stuff. He's already reviewing videos. He's already asking me for help and everything else. And he already, he has the strength to do it. It's just, it's a matter of just fixing the technique and he's going to smash it here for pretty quickly. He's going to get it. So. Now we'll go look at Coda's bench. And he does 125 for the first lift, which is a pound over body weight. So, I mean, that's already good if he can get it. And he gets it. So, 
when it comes to the bench, we're not doing like any kind of like hold at the bottom or anything. We're just, you know, just as long as it touches the chest and comes back up, then you're good. So he goes for 135 on his second attempt here. And he gets it to like uh, just off the chest. And then can't, can't get any higher. So he goes for it on the third one. Comes down. And it gets to basically the same spot, but can't get it. Out. I think he was really wanting to get bench um, on this day. I think that was what Dobbs said was like he the the one lift if he was gonna get any that he wanted was the was the bench. So he's a little disappointed with that, which you know that's okay because we didn't know how this event was gonna go in terms of you know <laughs> being tired and it's just a whole new world. So missing a lift isn't isn't a big deal during this meet, you know, like he's definitely going to get this in uh, training and or at the next meet for sure. Let's look at Austin's bench. And for the first one, he goes for 180, which is nine pounds under body weight. It's really good. Right, go Let's go. So he gets that kind of a struggle, but comes off the, the bench a little there, but you know, that's all right. Next one's 190, so this is basically body weight right here. Oh, you both are tight, tight. Uh -huh. He got stuck, it, like, it went down, and then, you know, started to come back up, and Rich, Rich is like, ah, it went down, we gotta just grab it, you know, I can't come back down, whatever. So it goes for 190 again, for this third one. <laughs> and, obviously, you can see his butt comes off the bench, but he gets it up, so we're like, you know what, man? <laughs> We'll give it to you just because, you know, for this first event, we're not going to be super duper duper strict about that kind of stuff. Like later, whenever they they know technique and they know like all the rules and everything, then we'll be more strict. And, you know, we're not going for super crazy PRs right now. So we're like, you know what, man, if it came down and it came back up. We'll give it to you. So, but yeah. Overall, impressive. I mean, body weight, that's hard. Body weight is, is, you know, the first big goal of any pincher. You want to be able to hit your body weight. So being able to do that is very impressive. Not a lot of people in the world could even do that. Let's look at Everett's benches. Like I said, he, he doesn't ever do bench. So this is uh, for sure his worst uh, lift because he just doesn't do it. Uh, but he's going for 190 on this first one, which is, you know, over body weight. So that's really good. Um, you can see he's got, uh, like sandals on, no leg drive, uh, hardly any arch, um, full extension on the arms, fully locked, has the longest reach possible, but gets it. So, you know, it's like, uh, not, not a good bench form or technique, but, uh, just, you know, strong, just, just pure strength, just pushing it up. So then he goes for 200 on his second attempt here. All right, here we go. Nice. All right, there was like a pro probably should have been like third attempt. It was, you know, it's slow enough to where, uh, you know, it's like, mm, might not be able to go more, but, you know, might as well go for it. Going for 205. <laughs> he's a madman. He has, you know, no no safeties. Uh, he's got the collars on, too. But, you know, here we go with the third one. Oh, it gets it halfway. It was, you know, it was so close. It was right there. Now he's going to do the... <laughs> The bar walk of shame down his down his body to his hips. <laughs> Get it off of him. All right, you know, good effort, good good effort for a lift that you never do. You know. So now let's look at Dobbs's bench, and like I said, he does not like bench. Um, he knows it's his weakest point, and he's he's wanting to start working on it now after after this meet. But um, coming in, he just kind of wanted to hit something around his his uh, PR, which I believe. Coming in was like at 245. Um, so first one, he goes for a 205 here. Yep. Comes down nice. Good bar path. Quick off the chest. 
That was good. That was, that was really good. All right, so he bumps it up to 225, two plates. On, on, on. Down. Comes down. Nice. That was good. That was pretty good. Like, his bar path is really nice. It comes, you know, it goes back and up just like it needs to. So, all right, so he went for 255, which is 10 pounds heavier, I believe, than his PR. Like I said, I think it's 245, so. So that one didn't come off the chest. Just a little bit too much there. If you would have went, went for 245, probably could have got that, maybe even 240, you know. Um, but that was just a little bit too heavy for that day. And, like, we you know, we were already pretty tired by the time the, the bench had rolled around, too. I know I was. I was exhausted <laughs> from moving all the weights and everything. But... Uh, yeah, you know, valiant effort, it, you know, at least it got it off the chest a little bit. So, but yeah, he's going to work on it and he'll be able to smash that by pff, the next competition for sure. He'll probably be up in like the 275 range. Let's look at Jeremy's benches. And this is the one that we were the most worried about because he unfortunately didn't get to do a lot of bench and training with us. Um, the days where we were doing bench, he had other you know, arrangements he had and like other, um, things planned so he didn't get to really come out and do a lot of bench with us so in terms of uh technique and just you know the amount of reps he's been he's been able to do on the on the lift this is the one he has the least amount on and so we were a little scary you know scared about this one you know we didn't really know what to what to put on whenever he did his um pr with me um in training he did 225 and it was pretty much a true max because it really was actually slow and everything unlike his squat and deadlift ones which were you know just kind of like not really prs the bench one was actually a pr so we knew that 225 was kind of his limit but that was way before he knew technique when he got that pr so we were like all right well let's just take it slow on this one so we decided to go with 205 for the first one so here we go and that was nice and smooth his technique's gotten a lot better now that he has actually got to do a few sessions with us after the PR. And then we went with 220. Because we didn't know. And I'm not even sure if he actually touched his chest on that one. It might have been a little bit high. But it still went up nice. So we were like, alright, you know what? Let's go 230. That'll be a 5 pound PR. Yeah. That one definitely touched. Oh yeah, that came up nice. He could probably do 240, 245 right now and then with more technique work and you know just more time under the bar it, it'll go up quick so very nice very impressive let's look at wrenches benches and this is the one we were like scared of because we knew he was injured coming in already and we didn't really know what to do so in training um like his his actual pr is 255 i believe um coming into training he had hit 265 using a one and a half inch board. Um, and it was super fast. I mean, it was, it was like, oh, wow. Okay. Like this is going to be easy. Right. Um, but we may have peaked like too early and he wasn't used to doing um, two bench sessions a week. And so the, something happened where his shoulder just kind of just gave up. It just like, wasn't working <laughs> like it's supposed to. And so we were kind of scared coming into this because it had only been like a week and a half since that happened. Um, so anyways, we go with 225 for the first one here. Go! And he's able to get it pretty quick. Um, but you can tell, as you can see there, he's holding his shoulder. and It's not good. You know, so we're like, uh... So at this point, you know, I'm supposed to I'm supposed to do the lift off and then I'm supposed to get out of the way of the camera. But because of like subconsciously I knew that like he was hurt and I was like I I didn't get fully out of the camera's view cuz I was like I probably need to grab this like in my mind I was like I want to be there in case like something bad happens. Um but anyways, so here we go with 245. And then like you can see Austin grabbed it a little bit there and you know, Wrench was like, wait, did you grab it? And he was like, oh, yeah, I did. He's like, oh, dang it, you know. But, yeah, and, you know, 
but came off a little bit, and then you know he was a little upset by it. just the just the whole thing. Like you know, Austin accidentally touching it, um, his shoulders and stuff being here. So now he's like, okay, well, I guess I'll try for it again, do two forty five, and so he goes for it. But at this point, his shoulder just it, like he his strength just wasn't there. Now he's hurt both shoulders, so he's like, okay. So on bench, not 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 a good day for Ranch, but. That's okay, because we know his strength is there. It's just a matter of getting uh, healed up, and then he'll be able to hit it. All right, here's my benches. Um, this is the one that I was mainly focused on. Um, I, I wanted to hit a PR on this because it had been uh, a year and a half since I've hit uh, 315. And I had failed a 325, got it like halfway up and then couldn't get the rest of it um was in training um was hitting numbers really well i had like a 280 in training that went up really fast um so i was like okay i've got this like my strength is there and it definitely definitely uh was there uh so i just went for 280 for the first attempt here yes. and it flew up it was nice like it felt good that one felt really good. So decided to go with 305 for my second attempt, just to get over the 300 mark. You know, I knew I could hit that. And it went up really nice too. And I was like, okay, I think I've got this, man. I think I can, I think I'm gonna PR today. So here we go with the 320. And watch my left arm here. So yeah, I get it. Basically the same spot I got the 325, but it was so lopsided and I just felt like super I was super tired after having like um moved all the weights and like unracked and re-racked and moved the bar and all this stuff cuz we only had like one implement that we were using, one station, and so it's kind of hard with six people. And I was just like really tired for some reason. Like I as I was sitting down between the second and third tips, I got like really wore out. And then when you look at uh, what my left arm was doing, it was just like, it was moving in and out. Like it wasn't stable at all. Like it was, uh, there was something going on and I knew I had some like lat tightness and other things happening. Cause I did some like um, assessments using the squat university uh, wall test and other things. And so I knew that was there and I was like, okay, well I didn't have time to like fully fix it. Cause it was only like six days before the, the meet when I realized it. And then I actually took a video and I'll show you here <laughs> of me figuring out even more, uh, things that was wrong with my left side. I tried to do the test where you pull it out to the side, like t testing external rotation. And I, uh, it, it just doesn't move. It doesn't move at all. As you can see in this video, it's just like <laughs> my arm doesn't move. And so these last two days I've, uh, I've started working on mobility exercises from squat university to fix that before I even get back into any kind of lifting, I'm going to fix that. So once that's there, my strength is there for the lift and I'll be able to get it. I just got to work on, uh, my body actually like <laughs> cooperating with me. And here is Coda's deadlift. This was insane. His his deadlift session was insane. So his first attempt here, he's going for 250. Let's go. Slide out. Right. And pulls that pretty quick. Like that was that was quick. <laughs> that was nice. But then second one bumps that up by 25. Goes for 275. Yeah. That was that was pretty nice. They came off the floor uh, a little slow, but so with this bar that we have, this is a deadlift bar, and uh, they're not used to pulling the slack out of the bar, which is the big advantage of using this bar is you get to pull the slack out, which gives you better uh, range of motion. It's like less less range of motion when you're starting off the ground. So because of that, like they weren't used to that, and so like it was a little weird. Um, they you know like they. They needed to pull the slack out, but they weren't. And so whenever it comes off the ground, it's a little slow. Um, but that's to be expected. So he's able to lock that crap out so quick and you know, look nice. So for this last one, 
This last one, he goes for 300. And this was the most impressive lift of the day for me personally that I saw. This was, this was the most impressive one. And this set the tone because he was the first one to go. He was the one to do the first, uh, like third attempt of anyone. And he set the tone for the rest of us in terms of the effort we got to bring and just what what you can do when you set your mind is something. So here we go. When he started walking backwards, we were like, oh, this is over. He's about to, he's on his heels. He's about to fall over. But he somehow, he somehow pulled it out. And we, we were like, holy crap, that was insane. And because of that, like everyone else started, was like, oh man, I've got to, I've got to bump up my game too. I've got to like start doing that. But let's take another look at it. Let's do a second, second look here. So we'll pause it and like, he, he goes, he gets it to like halfway. And then you start to see his foot, his left foot moves, his right foot moves even further. He stops, and then he pulls it up all the way. That is, that is insane. And his team was super hype. Like, they, <laughs> they were like, holy crap, dude. <laughs> and nobody better not get yeah, nobody can fail their final list. That's not that much art. Dude, you just blew my mind. <laughs> Holy fuck. Dude. Oh, I can kiss you right now. That was fucking crazy. That's an MVP moment right there, dude. Let's look at Austin's deadlifts. And like I said, with the deadlift session, <laughs> this deadlift session was a crazy one because after we saw Coda, you know, Austin was the next one to, to do his third attempt. And so, you know, had to bring the had to bring the the fire, but anyways, let's look at the first attempt here. So he goes for three sixty five, which is an impressive amount uh, as a starter. Let's go! And he gets that pretty quick. That was that was nice. Got some form and technique we need to work on, but in terms of <laughs> strength, this guy's a beast. This guy's very strong. The next, he bumps it up to 395, and he was kind of going off of what Jeremy's numbers were. Um, he actually did the exact same numbers as Jeremy because uh, once we started looking at it, we're like, "Oh, you're pretty similar to this. You want to just like you know not have to re-rack the rate weights and stuff like that." So it's kind of what we did. You want to chase me? Here you go, buddy. Let's go. Tight, everything tight. Pull the slide down, straighten it up. Let's go. Very fast. Like this guy's strong, and you know, if we can we can get his technique down. He's gonna be pulling some crazy numbers quickly. So he goes for 420, blaze it, and this is right after Coda, mind you. So he's like, all right, he's in that headspace of like, I just saw Coda go all out. I gotta go all out too, man. So here we go. He steps into the bar. No straps, by the way. He went he went strapless. So this is even more impressive. Go here. Stay tight. Tight. That crap was insane. And we were just sitting there like, man, what's going on? Let's look at Jeremy's deadlifts. Deadlift is definitely his favorite lift. Um, and that's mine too. But <laughs> so this is right after Austin went. So, you know, he, he's seen now Coda and Austin do crazy impressive lifts. And he's like, well. So we got the first attempt here at 365, and this was his max that he pulled in training. 
So we're like, yeah, let's just go with that. You know, might as well. And then do the same thing like we did with uh, the squat, and we'll just see what the, we'll see what your ceiling is. So, three sixty five is getting ready, and pulls it pretty easily, pretty quick. So we're like, all right, this is promising. This is good. So goes up to three ninety five. Kind of a big jump, but we were, we didn't really know what what his ceiling was. So we were like, let's just find it. Let's just find your ceiling. <laughs> tight, tight, tight. Up, 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 up. And that came up nice. Form looked good. Kept everything good. So then he said he wanted to jump up to 420 blazes. So we're like, all right, let's do it, dude. That was tasty. You know, he he had just seen uh, Austin and Coda go, so he knew he had to, <laughs> had to pull out all the stops for it. So he was able to hit it. New PR. Let's look at Everett's deadlifts. So his deadlifts funny for me to watch, just because uh, he does it in such a um, weightlifter fashion. Um, in terms of like the way he sets up, you can just tell it's it's very much how a weightlifter would uh, approach the bar compared to a power lifter. But yeah, he goes for 365 on this first one and gets it pff, really easily. That flew up there. That was that was really good. So then he bumps it up to 400 and uh, Everett's PR coming into this for deadlift is a 440 just like uh, Christopher's is. A little slow on the lockout, but coming off the floor is nice. Nice and smooth. So then <laughs> we were actually texting back and forth as uh, he was doing his attempts and such, and he saw that um, both Austin and Jeremy had hit their third lift, which is 420, and he was like, you know what? Put me down for 425. <laughs> he wanted to hit the, the five more just to, just to do it. There he goes. He's getting ready. No straps. Getting down there, doing that hook grip. <laughs> Done did it to him by five pounds right there. The lockout was a little slow, but man, good stuff. Let's look at Wrench's deadlifts. So his... Deadlift PR coming into this thing is a 440. Um, and I believe he did that. Um, he did that twice. He did it once um, back in like the summer with me. And then um, I'm pretty sure he pulled it in um, training not too long ago as well. Um, but anyways, so for his first attempt, he's going to go with 405. So four plates. And that comes up. Nice, just like a first attempt should. So that was really good. That was a good sign. So next he went straight up to 440. So tying his PR. All right, so he decided to jump it up to 460. Stay tight, stay tight, come on. And then it was just it was just too much. He may have felt it in his back. Um, we're not really sure. Um, we didn't get to talk to him afterwards much because he had to leave fairly quickly. He was getting ready to um, pack to go on vacation. Didn't even get to go out to eat with us afterwards. Um, just immediately got you know had to leave the after the competition was over. Um, so we didn't really get to ask him a bunch of questions on like you know what what certain things were feeling like and whatever because he's still on vacation right now as I'm talking. Um, but if he would have done 455, 450, uh, I feel like 450 is a definite he gets that with the way the 440 moved. Uh, 455, possibly 460 was just a little bit too much. 
but he broke it off the floor. So I mean, we know he's he's you know he's getting close. So yeah, that was a good day overall for Wrench. Uh, even though he had some setbacks, he still got a new PR on uh, squat, and you know, in terms of his strength and body weight, he's he's very very good. Let's look at Dobbs deadlift. So, <clears throat> like I said, coming in, he was stuck at 455 for like a year. Um, wanted to hit 475 as his like third attempt. So, comes in. Uh, he's used my deadlift bar once before uh, with uh, me and Wrench. He had come over one day, so he knew what it, what it was like and knew he needed to pull the slack out and all that. And that's why he wanted to go for 275 because he thinks like, you know, oh man, like this bar is way better than a <laughs> stiff bar. I think I'll be able to do a lot more. So that's why he had put his goal so high. So we're looking at here at 435 for his first attempt. And gets it pretty convincingly. That was nice. Now we've got 455, so this is the tie, his PR. <laughs> nice and smooth. Nice and smooth all the way up. And we've got the big boy, 475. I'm getting pumped up. So coming into this, like I said, I had the tear in my glute and, you know, whenever I first started back with the tear, I was like struggling with like, you know, 375, like it was rough. It was tough. So I was like, man, I, you know, it's, this is going to be hard to like <laughs> during, during training. I don't know how I'm going to get my strength back or not, but luckily I did. It came back fairly quickly over the you know past couple of months and, um, I felt good. I had, I had pulled, um, 475 in training as well. Um, and I also did some rack pulls. I did a rack pull with like 540 and it was fine. So I was like, you know what? Yeah, I mean, I'll try. I'll try and tie my PR, which actually isn't even really a tie because uh, my quote unquote PR was 525. Um, the day I did that, I had hit 515. And then right after that, I tried the 525 and I didn't fully lock it out. So I didn't really count it. Um, I, I just like I counted the 515 but not the 525 so I was like you know what I'll try 525 again today and that way if I hit it hit it it'll actually count so uh first lift 475 I decided to do mine before Dobbs um the reason I did that was so I could get rest after he did it but to also like do it, you know I knew I was going to get it so I did it first so that way he would see me do it I have even more incentive to try and hit it because that would be a new PR for him um, so here we go with the 475. Oh, that place got oh, yes. oh, yes. So then I bumped it up to 505 just like I did with the, the bench to just get over like the 300 mark. I was like, let me just get over 500. That way I can say like I at least lifted over 500 in case I miss anything else. And we'll try that. So this is the first time I had lifted over 500, um, you know, in like a, a long time, like for a PR. That was the last time I did it. So uh, here we go with the second attempt. Go! Yes! Oh, and I was like, all right, well, uh, 
I'm probably going to hit this 525 as long as I can lock it out. And I was kind of worried about the lockout, but anyways, I'm getting ready here. And uh, here we go. <laughs> So yeah, when we look at the uh, the final totals here on the the Wilks, so uh, I ended up having the the highest Wilks like uh, for an individual, and my team was the one who had the most. Uh, so we ended up quote unquote winning. Nothing really to win. Uh, it was just for fun. So uh, you know, we'll try to improve this next year. See if we can't beat this Wilk score again. Uh, we've got it all documented, so that way we can look at it and compare uh, the next time we do it. You know, we get done with everything. Before we take the plates off, we, we get some pictures, you can see. Uh, Jeremy wanted to get some pictures. I get a picture of myself with the, the 525 on the bar. Um, him and Austin get a picture here with uh, the 420, and then Coda gets his, you know, with the, uh, the 300. It was a good time, you know, a good time all around. But yeah, we plan on doing this uh, every six months or so. Uh, next one will be in May. Um, so, got six months to train. And we're going to do it again. Uh, we'll probably be at a different place. Uh, I'll, I'll probably have a house by then. Um, so, we'll, so, we'll be there, um, hopefully. But, yeah, like you know, I like the, the camera setup. We'll figure out a better way to uh, do this next time in terms of, you know, just, like making it go by faster and... Um, yeah, we learned a lot, you know, nice little, um, way to figure out how to do squad bench and deadlift all on the same day and just, you know, have some good camaraderie. We all, you know, like, or we all felt like we were all friends, you know, no one got angry really at anybody. Um, it's just good cutting up and, uh, laughing with each other and just being able to be some bros and lift some weights, you know? So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and, um, I plan on, Starting to do some more of like you know powerlifting uh, videos and stuff on my channel because um, that's kind of what I'm really into at this point, you know. And then obviously I'll do some uh, some more speed running here and there. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, you know, feel free to leave comments on how how good slash bad we were. And uh, yeah, but thanks for watching.